Stacy and I were actually discussing uh, the event, the trip later on the, on the way back home. And commenting and thinking about the quality of our young people. And I can tell you the group that I was with, about uh, seven to nine at times, just thoroughly impressed me. I, I, was, I was, you know, looking about at watching people and noticing the contrast of the behavior, the dress, and the conduct of our young people compared to those others that I saw. And I was so proud of them. It was an honor and a pleasure and a privilege to be with those young people. And we have every reason and every right to be proud of them. Have you ever taken a road trip? This time of the year, a lot of, a lot of folks are on the road and kind of take your life into your hands when you do that, don't you? Because of the uh, craziness of traffic and drivers and, and uh, so much to watch out for. There, all of the concerns of drunk drivers and distracted drivers and, you know, people who are texting or fiddling with the radio swerve a little bit. You realize every time that you get on the road that every person you meet is your potential death. You ever think about that? Boy, that's sobering, isn't it? Every single person you meet, all it takes is for them to be distracted for one second, slightly turn the steering wheel, veer over into your path, and you're in eternity. The next stop is judgment. So that uh, it really makes us want to be careful, doesn't it? It makes us think about the, the sobering thought of, of how much we need to be paying attention, not only to what we're doing, but what else is going on around us. And so part of the idea of taking a journey, uh, as far as getting in a vehicle, taking a journey today, is considering the dangers out there. Probably uh, you're going to, if you're going to take a road trip, going to go somewhere, and you're going to have a map. Uh, okay, that's a little outdated. These days we use GPSs, and most of us have them on our phones. Uh, I love being able to hit a button on my phone and saying, navigate me to wherever I'm going, and then it just gives me step-by-step -step directions. And I uh, love that, but I need something to get me there. I need something to show me the way, because I can tell you, I am still trying to learn my way around the uh, Spartanburg County area, and uh, because I depend on my GPS so much, I'd be better off if I was looking at a map and planning it out myself. But because I depend on a GPS so much, I just kind of say, GPS, get me there. I, you know, get me there, and then it gets me there, and I'm depending on it, and I'm not thinking for myself. And so I'm still, I've still got a lot to learn. <clears throat> but still, I've got guidance. I've got direction. Considering all of the dangers, considering the fact that uh, we need direction, and considering the fact that sometimes there may be detours. Now, this morning on the way, there wasn't actually a detour, but there were police officers in a, in a highway uh, uh, directing and stopping traffic, and uh, I don't know exactly what they were doing. I just know that they held me up, and I didn't need to be held up. But whatever it was they were doing, that they, they were doing a good job of it. And uh, there are all sorts of things, unexpected things that we encounter in life, uh, such as that person who's driving 30 miles an hour in a 55 mile per hour speed zone in a no passing zone you know and uh, you ever get frustrated with that they all do you know what the lesson there is leave earlier <laughs> boy I'm, I'm, I'm stepping all over my toes this morning uh, leave earlier and, and and make better plans and better preparation to account for that where am I going with this well, somewhere, believe it or not. And that is the fact that this path that we are traveling on the road is indeed that. We are traveling life's highway. And all of these things that we've talked about in, uh, in regards to taking a road trip apply to our lives. They apply 
to our spiritual lives as we are traveling this journey. There are detours, there are unexpected events that can, can hinder our plans, that can cause us to have changes in life. There we need the guidance, do we not, of, of a direction system, something that will get us to where we need to go. Of course, we're talking about the Bible. And uh, there are dangers to watch out for, those things that can so easily and so quickly uh, even cause our destruction with just, just the wrong decision or being in the wrong place, making uh, the wrong choice at certain times. And so as we think about the idea of traveling life's highway, let's go to the Bible to determine what the best route is to choose. Indeed, the Bible is our roadmap. The Bible has within it everything that we need to know to get to where we're going. And if it doesn't have what we need to know to get to where we're going, then we're not headed the right place. And so if we're following the Bible, if we're allowing the Bible to truly direct the steps of our life, every aspect of our life, then we can know that when we are through with this journey, which is life, then we will arrive at our destination, which is heaven. And that is what it's all about. You know, sometimes we get distracted in life. We talk about distracted driving. How about distracted living? You know, we hear everything about distracted driving. Don't test and drive. Don't do this to drive. And it's all well and good, but how about distracted living? How many of us in our lives become distracted by this and that and the other and we, we lose focus of who we are and where we're going and what it is that we're about? And so sometimes we need to remind ourselves to focus on the road. Look ahead. Set your affections on things above not on things of the earth. For you have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. And so we are reminded then, we are reminded here to, to avoid the danger of distracted living and to keep our mind on the goal, on our destination, have a clear path to where it is we are going and how it is that we are going to get there. Colossians chapter 3 in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 20, we won't take the time to read that uh, whole thing, but what we will do is, is uh, take a look at a few of the uh, passages here. Verses 1 through 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So there's our direction. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. There's our destination. Our direction is an understanding of who we are, where we've come from, and where we're going. Never forget that. Never forget it. Regardless of the circumstance you find yourself in, never forget who you are, where you've come from, and where you're going. Why is it so important to remember where we come from? Because most of us don't want to go back there, right? Because most of us realize that where we have come from is not where we want to end up. But we are moving forward, we are moving onward, and we have our sights set on heaven. When Christ, who is our life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. And then the following verses are a reminder of the things to put to death, those distractions, those things, those those roadblocks, those things that will destroy us spiritually. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness. And then, in verse 8, 
anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, lying. But verse 12 reminds us again of who we are and what this life is all about. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Now, I have to fight the temptation to focus on verse 13 because that's one of those verses that I always want to drive home. And I'm not going to take the time to do that, but I want to ask you to look at what verse 13 says. And see if you have the capacity to forgive as Christ has forgiven you. But of all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, there again is our direction. There is remembering who we are and whose we are, and giving thanks to God the Father through him. And so we have this guidance for life, this GPS system, if you will, that positions us toward God, a God positioning system that, uh, that, that directs us to God and guides us and directs us in our life, and that is his word. Be sure of your destination. Where are you going? I like to talk to, to young people as yesterday as having a discussion with some of them about their plans for life. Where are you going? What are you doing with your life? Where, what are your plans? What are your goals? And you know what? Those can change in life, and sometimes they do, right? I mean, you may work 20 years at a job and decide you want to do something else, and that's okay. But that's not really your destination. That's just something that happens along the road. Our destination really is not about... Our career, our destination is about where we will spend eternity. It's about living this life with Christ and then living with him forever in eternity in heaven. So what is your destination? Is it heaven? You remember what Jesus said, the promise that he made in John chapter 14. Beginning in verse 1 where he said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, my Father's house, or many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There's our destination. Don't become distracted by the things that life has to offer. All of the worldliness and all of the lustfulness and all of the sinfulness and all of those things out there that are so easily, uh, cause us to be so easily distracted. Keep focused. You've got somewhere to go. Be sure you get there. Stay out of the ditch. I had a mentor of mine when I was a young person, a child myself. One of those guys, like we have some here, who just out of the goodness of his heart, because it's who he was and what he liked to do, spent a lot of time working with young people. He is now an elder at that congregation. And I've always had an immense amount of respect for him. And I remember something he used to say to me almost every time that I would leave. When I was 16, 17 years old, he knew something about how I drove, I guess. But uh, he would always remind me, Michael, keep your shiny side up and between the ditches. Keep your shiny side up and between the ditches. And I never forgot that. And, and, you know, and there's something there that in, in this application as we're talking about living life to avoid the ditches. We, we drive on this road, and on either side is this pitfall. On either side are these ditches. And once you get in the ditch, it's very hard to get out. Usually you need some help getting out of the ditch. It may be 
in your life right now, as you look at it, you say, where am I on the road to, or the road to heaven and this pathway of my life, where am I? And it could very well be that when you look at it, you say, you know something, I'm stuck in a ditch. I got distracted. I looked off. I saw, I saw this pleasure. I saw this promise. I saw this fool's gold out here. And I looked off, and I got off path, and now I'm in the ditch, and I'm stuck. You need some help? Would you like us to throw you a rope? Would you like to have some support getting out of that ditch? All you have to do is ask. That's what we're here for. You see, as we're traveling along this road, we need to be aware of something. Driving down the road, especially on the interstate, it gets very much competition. Kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog thing. And people swerving in and cutting each other off and trying to beat the other person. How about stopping for that person that's stuck in the ditch? How about slowing enough to stop and say, hey, I need some help. You know somebody stuck in a ditch spiritually? Somebody who's struggling, somebody who's spinning their wheels, can't get any traction? How about stopping and saying, hey, you need some help? Have you ever, uh, ever been driving down the uh, road and you saw somebody on the side of the road and you really couldn't tell whether they needed help or if they stopped for something else? And you passed by, and, and as you passed by, you thought, you know, I probably should have stopped and asked, but I'm not sure if they needed help. And so you just keep going. You ever been there? Maybe. Maybe the reason people are passing by is because you haven't let anybody know you need help. We all want to get there. And we want to get there together. And so if the pressures of life, the distractions of life have caused you to be stranded spiritually, then please let us help you. Got to watch out for Satan. He's out to get you. He has planted those ditches, those traps along your way to deceive you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, as, as he is discussing the fact that a brother that he addresses in 1 Corinthians, uh, the one who was in the sin of having his father's wife, and he commanded the church to withdraw fellowship from him, now he says, hey, this person suffered enough, extend your love to him. And then he goes on to say this, he says, now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For indeed, I have forgiven anything, if I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Let, listen to this, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Satan is looking for an opportunity to take advantage of you. And you know where that opportunity will come from? Oh, it's, it's, it's this movie over here. It's this friend over here. It's this, this, it's this thing that's going to happen. No, not really. Oh, sure, sure, those are pitfalls and we need to avoid them. But that is not where Satan takes his opportunity. Satan takes his opportunity in your heart. Those are just tools to get there. Because if my heart is in the right place, then that, uh, that, that envious thought that I have about a, someone else who is doing well and, and I don't like the fact that they're doing better than me and that causes me to have hard feelings against them, Satan never can plant that seed if my heart is not inclined for that. So guard your heart. Guard your heart from hatred, from envy, from pride from lusting after the things of this world that can detract us on our spiritual path. 
Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, speaking of the false teachers, he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Satan, Satan doesn't appear to us as this red dude with horns and a tail and a pitchfork with an evil mustache and a grin on his face. I shaved it off at one point. But that's not how he... That's not how he comes. No. I, Satan can come to us as a friend. He can come to us as a loved one, a family member. Satan can come to us as a preacher. He can come to us in many ways of people that we've already gotten their trust and then they can lead us in the wrong path. Satan can come to us as a father, a mother, a brother, sister, son, or daughter to distract us from being who we are, God's people. And so we need to be careful to look for Satan wherever he is and to understand his wiles and not fall in the ditch. We're reminded in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 11, to put on the whole armor of God. But the reason is that we will be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. James chapter 4, verses 7 through 8, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. It's very easy along this path to get our hands dirty with the sins of the world. But we're God's people. We're God's children. We're told to cleanse our hands. It really has nothing to do with hand washing. It's talking about heart washing. Having holy hands means that we are pure in heart. We're seeking God. Headed to heaven. And so as you and I Travel this road together. Let us be sure. To be sure of our destination. To choose the right path. To stay out of the ditch. And to help each other along the way. As you travel this path, where are you? Do you find, Christian, do you find, child of God, this morning that you're in the ditch, that you're struggling that you want to be on the right path, but somehow along the way you've gotten distracted. Satan has used his devices. He has entrapped and he has ensnared you. We want some help. Can we, please? We want to. Ask us. Let us. Can we pray with you, for you? Do you need God's forgiveness? A shoulder to lean on. And maybe, as we've talked about this this morning, you see that the path that you're on, the path that you're following, isn't taking you to the right place. Then it's time to get out your global positioning system, your God positioning system, and get your life headed in the right place. And maybe that begins with a, a denial of yourself and an embracing of the grace of God taking up of the cross of Christ. As you repent of sin, confess Jesus as the Son of God, and are buried with Him in the waters of baptism for the remission of your sins, rising to walk a new life headed the right direction. And if we can assist you with that also, would you come while we stand and sing?